Welcome to the lecture for section 9.2. This is um, MGF 1106, Liberal Arts Math. And uh, this chapter we're going to be talking about geometry. And my name is Jorge Gavillan. So the objectives for for this lesson are the following. So you're going to understand the basic terminology and properties of polygons. We're going to solve problems involving angle relationships of polygons. We're also going to go ahead and use similar polygons to solve some problems, and then we're going to be aware of some differences uh, between Euclidean uh, geometry and non-Euclidean geometry. So let's go ahead and do some definitions first. Now, a plane, uh, a plane figure is closed if we draw it without lifting the pencil and if the starting and ending points are the same. Now, a plane figure is simple if we can draw it without lifting the pencil and in drawing we never pass to the same point twice with the possible exception of the starting and ending point. So here you see four different diagrams. And the first one is closed and simple, because we can start at any point, uh, draw the entire figure, and then end up back at the starting point without having gone through um, any point uh, twice. The next one is, is a simple figure. Uh, again, there's no crossing over points, but it's not a closed figure. The third one is, is closed, but it's not simple, and we can see that they actually, um, right in the middle, uh, we pass through that point twice. And then the last one, again, is not simple, uh, neither is it a closed figure. The next thing that we're going to define are polygons. Now, a polygon is a simple closed plane figure consisting only of line segments, and these line segments are called edges. Now, no two consecutive edges lie on the same line. Now, we call the endpoint of an edge a vertex, and in plural, it's vertices. Now, a polygon is regular if all of its edges are the same length and all of its angles have the same measure. So the first um, diagram that we have is not made out of line segments, so therefore it's not a polygon. Now, uh, the second one, we have two figures here. They're non-regular polygons, uh, and the reason being is because they have sides that are not the same length. And then the last uh, figure, we have regular polygons. Uh, all the sides are the same, and all the angles in, in the actual figure are the same. So the next thing that we're going to uh, define is a, a polygon if it's convex or non-convex. So a polygon is convex if for any two points x and y that are inside the polygon, the entire line segment xy also lies inside the polygon. So you can see for the first one that this polygon is convex because I have two points x and y. I can go ahead and connect them with a line uh, segment and both uh, uh, the entire line segment is within the polygon. Now, in the second one, you can see it's non-convex because for any two points x and y, part of the line segment is actually outside of the polygon. Now, the next thing is the, the names of polygons. And some of these you've already seen before, triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon. And then we have hexagon, heptagon, octagon, nonagon, and decagon. So uh, there are names for 11 sides and 12 sides and so on. But eventually, if it just gets too much, they just said it's an n-gon. So the next thing we're going to talk about are triangles. So we have three types of triangles. Scalene, and now three types uh, in reference to their sides. So scalene, none of the sides are equal to each other. And then isosceles, where at least two sides are equal. Now, from an isosceles triangle, we can get an equilateral triangle, which essentially uh, means that all of the sides are equal in length. The next thing we're going to look at are quadrilateral. So here are four-sided um, plane figures. So the first one is a trapezoid, so at least one pair of parallel sides. Then it's a parallelogram, which, have, which has two pairs of parallel sides. From a parallelogram, we can go to a rectangle, and a rectangle has four right angles. And then we can also go to a rhombus, and a rhombus has all sides that are equal in length. And then from these two, we can go, go ahead and go to a square, which all sides are equal with four right angles. Now, polygons and angles. So here's an example. Find the sum of the measures of the interior angles in triangle ABC. So in order to do this, what we want to do first is we want to construct a line M containing the line segment AC. So in, what we're going to do is just extend the line segment AC. And then we're going to go ahead and draw a second line through the point B that is going to be parallel to the line M that we, that we just drew. And that diagram is going to look like this. Now, now we have two lines that are parallel, which is line L and M. We also have a transversal, which is line segment 
AB and also line segment BC. And if you recall from 9.1, we had some relationship with these angles. So now this is uh, this is going to allow us to find the sum of the the measure of the interior angles of a triangle. So the first thing is that looking at angles one and two, those are alternate interior angles. And then looking at angles three and five, those are alternate interior angles. So angles three and five have the same measure, and so do angles one and four. Now the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three is equal to 180 degrees. That's the same thing as the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle five. Now the next thing we're going to look at is find the interior angle sum of a convex polygon A, B, C, D, E. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide the, the pentagon into a collection of triangles. And that's going to look like this. So if you notice we have three triangles here. So we have triangle A, uh, E, D, we have triangle A, D, C, and then triangle A, B, C. So then off of that we're able to uh, get that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E is actually equal to the measure of all of the nine um, um, angles that we just formed by having these three triangles. So in other words, since we have three triangles and each triangle is 180 degrees, so we multiply that by three and we get the, the measure of the interior angles, which is 540 degrees. So here's a quick table to sort of summarize a little bit what we just talked about. So a triangle, three sides, 180 degrees. A quadrilateral, four sides, 360 degrees. And a pentagon has five sides and it's 540 degrees. So if you notice, they're all multiples of 180 degrees. So there's a formula for that. Angle sum of a polygon. The sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex polygon having n sides is n minus 2 times 180 degrees. And then the interior angles of a regular polygon, each interior angle of a regular polygon with n sides has a measure of n minus 2 times 180 divided by n. So remember those formulas because we're going to use those again. So here's an example. A billboard is to, be, uh, is to be in the shape of a giant star. Let's determine the angle measures of each point of the star. So the first thing is we're going to look at the pentagon angles because the interior of the star is actually a pentagon. So you can see that the angles, the interior angles of a pentagon is 108 degrees. So here's the pentagon here in shaded in gray. That's 180 degrees. Now we know that then that particular triangle here the, um, the VEZ has 180 degrees total. Now, how do we get the 72? Well, the angle from the 108 plus the angle with the 72 has to add up to 180 because that's a straight angle. So 180 minus 108 gives you 72. So we know that that angle is 72. Now, we also know that the other angle here, angle Z, is also going to be 72 because the angle in the pentagon is 108. So 180 minus 72 minus 72 gives us the 36 degrees. And then off of that, we can actually find that the measure of all of the, uh, the angles here of the star actually equal 36 degrees. Now the next thing we're going to talk about are similar polygons. Now two polygons are similar if the corresponding sides are proportional and the corresponding angles are equal. So here we have the corresponding angles and then the corresponding sides. So therefore pentagons A and B are similar, I mean polygons A and B are similar polygons. So here's an example. A bridge is to be used to cross a river. The distances in the two right triangles were measured. Use this information to find the distance d across the river. So we're going to go ahead and find the, the essentially the distance or the length of line segment BC. So again, here's the diagram. So what we're going to do is we're going to, going to use some of the information that we know. So the measure of angle BAC is equal to the measure of angle DAE because they're vertical angles. Now the measure of angle C is equal to the measure of angle D because they're 90 degrees and they're both right angles. So therefore triangle ACB is similar to triangle ADE. Now based off this information what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use this proportion. So the length of segment BC 
divided by the by the length of segment ED here in red is going to be equal to the length of segment AC divided by the seg by the length of segment AD and that's here in blue so taking that information we can go ahead and fill it out and and start having some values in the proportion of course we are solving for for line segment BC so here we're going to go ahead and cross multiply and then divide and then we get that <clears throat> excuse me D is actually 15 um, feet so we can use similar polygons similar triangles to solve problems that involve um, figures that are proportional to each other. And that's the end of segment 9.2. Thank you.